This program contains subject matter and language that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm Nick. I'm 23 years old. Nick has always been a smiling guy, a charismatic guy. He's always been very poised and comes across as a positive and happy person. Nick's someone that could really light up a room when he walked in. Nick's the kind of guy that when people meet him, they would think this is the kind of guy who's going places. But the path he is on is either death or prison. I'm absolutely a drug addict. Um, no doubt about it. I, I, I contracted MRSA, which is like a medically resistant staph infection. And it was so bad and so much rotten flesh and so many infected parts that they said I nearly lost my left arm from the elbow down. They said if I would have uh, let it go for a day or two more, I would have been an amputee. Now, every time that Nick is in the hospital, it's just to get more drugs. I can definitely be pretty irritable. He gets violent. Been known to break things and punch holes in the walls. Nick, stop it. It's scary. You know, it's hard when you, when you look back at the old days. Know what Nick could have been. When I first saw Nick, he was gorgeous. He was a beautiful little baby. He was a precious baby. He was already smiling when he was three days old. He smiled for his birth picture. He was, of course, my firstborn and, and first son, and so I was very, very excited. I worked up. Uh, a whole lot when uh, my boys were younger, you know, getting started in the real estate business. I saw it really grow from a very little company building his empire, 30 or 40 agents. It was great, you know, as a young kid to have a, a father who's so successful. In my eyes, my dad was Superman. From an early age, Mike would take Nick to the office with him. Remember, I took him to a sales meeting one day. This is list listing agent Nick. He was a little tiny guy. I stood him up on a conference room table. Oh, you like to fish? So do I, especially with my grandpa. He's the experienced fisherman. What are you selling? And um, brought the house down. <laughs> <laughs> he thought that Nick might be following in his footsteps. My dad saw a gift in my brother. I told him, Nick, You've got the looks, you got the charisma, you got the charm, you got the personality, you got the quick wit. So if you use that, the sky's the limit. Have you sold a house before? Um, we've lived in this house for quite some time. Did you have a good experience? I wanted to make my dad happy, to make my dad proud, to just be that son that he always wanted me to be. I saw the change in people after, you know, they'd been, been at the party for a little while and had been drinking for a little bit, and it looked like a hell of a lot of fun, laughing and this. And just a lot of laughter and a lot of just, it was, seemed like a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, so why not? I wanted to do that too. I wanted to feel good. I remember being young, my dad handing me uh, a full beer. I remember just feeling so good and just like this warm, feeling like I, I was covered with a blanket and just so okay, you know, like just this uh, absolutely for you. you know, when Nick started smoking pot or having a beer in high school, I really didn't think much of it. My dad was, uh, you know, it's okay to break rules every now and then, it's okay to this, it's okay to that, just don't get caught. Mike was more of the boys will be boys mentality. I tended to be the one that would be uh, uh, cut the boys a little slack. I spoiled Nick. I, I spoiled my boys. I mean, I admit it. He was probably a child that needed stricter boundaries when he was young. He started being lazy in school and not getting the grades that we knew he was capable of. When we found him, he was so high and strung out. And I sort of like came to, and I freaked out because I saw cops, you know, I saw my dad. He was 
fighting and screaming and cursing and calling people names. All of a sudden, everything changed. I went from being proud of him to not being proud of him. It's two big dudes. And they come in, and they're like, you're coming with us. Put me in handcuffs. And my parents didn't say bye to me when I left. They were actually nowhere to be seen in the house when I was escorted out. Uh, I was really pissed at my parents, like, how dare you guys? You can't deal with me yourself. You got to pay somebody else to deal with me. Well, here, fix my son. I don't want to. Nick will say that I've abandoned him, but I never abandoned him. He abandoned the family. I was so pissed. I felt so betrayed, and I was so angry, and just, yeah, that really messed with me. I, I held a lot of resentments against that. I do what I got to do to get my dope. proud of you, my son, Nick. It's your drug use which has broke my heart. You're gonna be given a once in a lifetime opportunity and I will tell you, it's a miracle. I love you, Nikki. I just want you back as my son. sober today and I feel amazing. I had no idea that sobriety could feel this good. Nick has a little bit of a salesman quality to you in that he can, you know, in no offense to that profession, but he can look at you square in the eye and, and lie to you and do a very good job at that. morphine at the hospital. The doctor made it really clear. If you're taking it in a structured environment for a valid reason, it's okay. It appears that he's having already a hard time. And I'm really hoping this is medical necessity, but it's beginning to have the flavor of cravings. Uh, so I'm very worried about Nick at this point. The pain has just gotten substantially worse. I've not been able to keep food down, I'm sweating like crazy, and it's just, uh, it's getting to the point where it's being unbearable. Faith swell, you know. 